This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and I read in Jesus name. Let brotherly love continue. Don't neglect to show hospitality. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Remember those in prison as though you were in prison with them and the mistreated as though you yourselves were suffering bodily. Marriage is to be honored by all and the marriage bed kept undefiled because God will judge the sexual immoral and adulterers. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we may say boldly, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you. As you carefully observe the outcome of their lives, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Don't be led astray by various kinds of strange teachings. For it is good for the heart to be established by grace and not by food regulations, since those who observe them have not, been, have not benefited. We have an altar from which those who worship at the tabernacle do not have a right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the most holy place by the high priest as a sin offering are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp bearing his disgrace. For we do not have an enduring city here. Instead, we seek the one to come. Therefore, through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Don't neglect to do what is good and to share, for God is pleased with such sacrifices. Obey your leaders and submit to them, since they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so that they can do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are convinced that we have a clear conscience wanting to conduct ourselves honorably in everything. And I urge you all the more to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace who brought up the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with everything good to do his will, working in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to receive this message of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. Be aware that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon enough, he will be with me when I see you. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those who are from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, eternal rock of ages, we salute you this morning, God. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Indeed, this is the day that you have made. We have come to learn at your feet this morning, O God. We ask that you open the eyes of our understanding, O God, to see you in every situation that we go through. Open our ears to hear your word and open our hearts to receive your word with gladness that we will not only be hearers of your word but will also be doers in Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit of God, speak to me, speak through me and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Alright, so we just read um, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and this is just this is Paul giving us um, you know um, 
his final exhortations, encouraging us, encouraging us on how we should conduct ourselves. You know, he did that a lot. You know, Paul did a lot of encouragement, you know, to just keep us keep us united as a body of christ to keep us in tune and keep us you know to he continually reminded the christians how to live our lives how to live our lives the weapons that we have you know by just immersing us immersing ourselves in the word of god and staying true to the faith and so here he's giving his final exhortation you know saying we should continue in brotherly love continue to show brotherly love amongst ourselves as christians show hospitality he says because by doing so a lot of people have welcomed angels without even knowing it without this i remember i shared um my experience one time with um with you guys when i went to the store and you know someone walked up to me and just said something um uh, about keeping the sheep or keeping the fruits or something like that and I turned back. I didn't see him again. I believe he was an angel. He was speaking concerning something that, you know, God had showed me. I shared that in a previous episode. So, you know, just be nice to people. Just be nice to people. You never know. You never know when you entertain an angel. Praise the name of the Lord. And I, and I, I, I strongly believe in angels. I believe that God sends angels to us. So it's a good thing to be nice not just to the people that you know but to the people that you don't know praise the name of the lord hallelujah he says to remember those in prison remember those who are going through persecution those who want to be free like you and i who want to be free to practice their, their religion to worship god in the church but they cannot do so because of the persecution that's going on in their area he's telling us to remember them in our prayers as if we were the ones in that situation so when you pray don't just pray for yourself don't just pray for your family god bless me give me food give me money give me this and give me clothes no it's good to pray for those things yes pray for yourself pray for your family but also remember those that are not related to you by blood but just by the covenant of the blood of jesus you know remember them in your prayers as well it says in verse 4 marriage is to be honored by all and the marriage bed kept undefiled because god will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterers this is written plain black and white in the bible unfortunately a lot of us a lot of people are not abiding by this it's almost as if people don't fear the judgment of God. I wouldn't say it's ignorance because, you know, I feel that some people know. A lot of a lot of people know you. I mean, we're adults. And if once you're at, at the marriageable age, you're an adult. That's why marriage is not for babies. Not everybody gets married. A 10-year-old cannot go get married. Marriage is for adults. And so when you're getting married and you take your vows... You know what you're saying. You know you know the implication of what you're doing. Yet, so many people don't live by that law, that rule. They don't live by the vow that they take. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible is saying here, not only are you cheating, I mean, cheating on your spouse, that's even like the, the smallest part of it. The greatest consequence is that, you know, such people will be judged such people will be judged god will judge them it's in the bible it's not a cost it's not it's not i'm not the one saying it verse 4 hebrews chapter 13 god will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterers someone that is not your husband someone that is not your wife you have no business being with that person it's plain and simple there's no confusion here it's very clean english you have no business being with that person. But a lot of people have blood the, the lines. You hear things like, I'm in an open relationship. What do you mean by open relationship? Where you're free to go date somebody. Or you're married. The couples are married. You're married. The other couple is all the couples are married. But you're, you're free to go date other people. You call that open relationship. 
God will judge all of that activities. And please, as a Christian, you have no business being in such activity, being in such relationships. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's be careful what we engage ourselves in. Even though God has given us the gift of free will, he's also given us a gift of common sense. Common sense, knowing good from evil. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's read on. In verse 5, it says, Keep your life free from the love of money. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we can say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The love of money, the Bible says, is the root of all evil. We have sleepless nights because we're thinking about money. Money is good, yes. Money, is, money solves a lot of problems. It answers all things. But the love of it is the root of evil. Be content with what you have. Understand that five, our five fingers are not equal. Not everybody is going to be a billionaire. Not everybody is going to be a millionaire. Not everybody is going to, is going to be, you know, influential. Not everybody is going to own a house, drive a car, own a Rolls Royce and all of those things. Not everybody. The Bible says God gives wealth to whomever he chooses. And he gives you the grace to enjoy it. Because there are situations where you have money and you don't enjoy it. But he would give you wealth and he will give you the grace to enjoy the wealth. Whatever he has given you, whatever you have, be content with it. That's not to say be lazy. Play your part. Do your due diligence. Get a degree if you can. Get educated as much as you can. Do your professional certifications as much as you can. Improve on yourself as much as you can. And when you have done all, stand. When you have, when you have done all, be content with what you know with what you have if you get a job as a manager be content with that do do what you can play your role you know everything for every, look life is in phases okay the fact that you're not a billionaire now does not mean that you can never be a billionaire so this is not to say be lazy this is very deep i could stay here all day right but what i'm trying to say is at every point in time be content be content improve yourself work on yourself you know just make strive to be better there's nothing wrong with striving to be better strive to be better but don't be so over don't be consumed don't let it lead you to to desperation where you can do anything like i, I you can you can do anything you can do devious things you can manipulate things just because you want to be wealthy. Just because you want to have the kind of car that your friend has. You want to, you want to, you know, just be seen as rich and, you know, just be popular for the sake of being popular. You just want to live large. And you would do anything to achieve that. Even if it means killing somebody. Even if it means stealing from somebody. The Bible says, be content. Be content. Contentment is not laziness. Contentment is not lack of vision. Contentment is not lack of drive. Don't get it confused. Being content is knowing where your limit stops. Knowing your limit. Knowing your limit, that's being content. This is a limit. You cannot do more than this one. I want to get this car. I want to be this rich. But for now, I cannot afford it. This and this and this is what I can afford. 
and it makes me happy and I'm happy with it. That's contentment. That's going to be happy with every situation of your every every phase, not situation. Every phase. For every phase, look, there are phases in life, like I said. There's a time when you need to wait. There are times you need to put in the work. You need to put in the work. And there's a time when the work starts to pay off. Just like a planter, a farmer would plant a seed and would wait for that seed to germinate and begin to yield fruits. That's how life is. So don't go looking for fruits when you haven't planted. You have to plant first before you look for the fruits, before the fruits start coming up. Don't go looking for fruits when you haven't planted. Life is in phases. Life is in stages. At every point in time, give thanks to God. Be happy. Don't let, don't let lack of money take your joy away. Don't let it give you sleepless nights. It will come. It will come. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will not leave you. I will not abandon you. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember your leaders. Pray for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think we're going to stop here for now. I think we're going to stop here for now. This is because the rest of it, he was just talking about. Um, okay, no, this is important. Do not be led astray by various kinds of teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by grace and not by food regulations. There's so many doctrines out there. The too many doctrines out there. If you're not grounded in the word and you don't know what the Bible says, you will fall for everything and anything. Anybody can come up to you and say anything to you. It is important to study the word. It is important to know what the Bible says. It is important to equip yourself with the word. Equip yourself with the word. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is just different, you know, just final exhortation, bits and pieces of here and there. Everything he has taught us and just like capping, capping the whole thing up. That this is what I've said. This is what we're, you know, how we should live our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 14 says, For we do not have an enduring city here. Instead, we seek to come to one. Therefore, through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Let the praise of our God be on your lips at all times. Let it be on your lips at all times. I'm just rushing through because, um, you know, it's just touching on different topics, different um, areas. But this is it basically. And this is what we've been reading through all this while. Principles, you know, how to live your life as a Christian and how to be an achiever, an overcomer in this end times. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we thank you for your word that we have heard today. We thank you because the entrance of your word always brings light and understanding. We thank you because, Lord, today we have heard again all the teachings of God that you have you have spoken to us and you've been teaching us and revealing to us all this while. We pray, Father, that we'll not forget any of these things, Father. The grace to remember and to be equipped with all these teachings so that when we face such situations, we'll remember what to do. Grant unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we go out today, Father. Give your angels charge concerning us to keep us in all our ways. We'll go out victorious. We'll come back victorious. At the end of the day, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.